Thanks, everyone. So, I am very excited to share uh, our story here about uh, integrating into a face and providing excitement behind one of the most unexciting pieces of technology in today's modern environment. Uh, for those of you that don't know much about many machines, they haven't changed in 30 years. They've added payment processing and credit cards, but that's about it. They really haven't, uh, they haven't stepped up their game and they're having a very difficult time in that industry. And I've been working with the North American market uh, for about two years now, identifying new and exciting ways that we can bring this and into face and just in something we can bootstrap from day one, which is very exciting. So, my name is Brad Roman. Uh, I am Canadian. I, I love uh, Daft Punk and Harley Davidson motorcycles. Um, I'm a technology guy, 25 years hardware software development. Uh, I've been helping other people uh, fulfill their ideas and turning a napkin design into a real product. Um, technology first, bacon is my second love, so any technology about bacon, those go together great. And, and you know, I, I really, it's hard to be able to put all of these in priority order, but you know, if I had a, if I had a mix, that's, that's it right there. Uh, I'm from Nelson, BC, Canada. It is a rural town, about 10,000 population. If any of you are familiar with Canada, Vancouver, Calgary, drop a dot right in the middle. We are seven hours from any big city and in the middle of the mountains. And I have fiber internet that connects me to the whole world. So that's all I need. Smart one, it is pronounced smart one. We get a, a lot of interesting interpretations about our name. Um, and the missing A is in a very important piece of that, uh, that name itself. So smrt one .ca is our website. So smart touch screens for many machines. We didn't intend to build uh, a touch screen environment. We didn't intend to build hardware. I started this journey uh, eight years ago by building maker spaces, tech clubs, fab labs. I'm an infrastructure guy and on the economic development level, so I work with public users, educational institutions, commercial clients, and help them fulfill their ideas through uh, a, a project they started about four years ago, which is a $2 million fab lab in a rural center. And it's changing the, the entire landscape of British Columbia, where I'm from. And we're seeing now the reverberation uh, across the entire country. So, smart vending machines don't just sell a product. They sell the company, the brand, the consumer experience. And I think this is one of the most important things about the software itself, is it lets you tell the story. It lets you sell the customer by name, by engagement, by interaction. And one of the things that we really picked up on with Intuaface, it's been just a little over a year that we've been using the software, it's that it just works. It's, and you know, I, 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 it comes down to the name of Intuaface itself, intuitive. I think for myself, that's the part that grasped me is, I, have, I am of the Adobe generation, where it's drag and drop, it's change graphics, it's build media, and I don't have to think about the design, I don't have to worry about the interactions. The, the software layers are all there, and for those that are the advocates of Intuaface, it's very easy once you start showing people what they can do with it, and how quickly that happens. So when it comes down to, you know, what are smart menu machines capable of doing? You know, it's, it's a whole new world because vending machines, again, are this one-dimensional product where you don't know who's buying things, how they're buying them, how they've interacted. You just know that you sold 30 chocolate bars yesterday and 40 cans of pop, but you haven't got a clue of who you've done that for. You don't know what you're doing to be able to improve it. And you might make a change, but it's going to take you three, four months of interaction and, and sales for you to discover trends or future opportunities. So, one of the things I'm most proud of is uh, this happened completely out of accident. Is we are the definition of smart vending machines. If you Google this, we are the first link. We didn't pay for that. We didn't uh, 
do any of the, you know, the, the SEO to get there. We just started putting out our own content, talking about the stories, talking about what we wanted to do with the vending machine industry. So we really think of this as a superpower for vending machines. And that the interaction layers, this is, is an open landscape. And I'm excited to be able to share a lot of that opportunity. So right away, I, you know, I, I'm a personality into it itself. People give me a soapbox and I'll stand in front of 600 and start talking about technology and, and get, I'm evangelical about it. If I had the church of technology, I would be delivering sermons every day. So my company really is a homage to my interest, my 25 years in, in this, and but I've only spent two years in the bed machine world. And we have been making partnerships and partnerships and partnerships along the way because it it is a it's a new opportunity and it's unlike anything anybody ever dreamed of. So interactive touchscreen upgrade for more than 15 million existing vending machines. That's, that's my market. That's what I'm going after. 10 million in North America, 5 million in Europe. These are vending machines that are 0 to 30 years old. We're turning a 49 inch 4K touchscreen into a giant keypad. But it's in a format that everybody's familiar with. It's a 49 inch iPhone. It's doing all the things that a 49 inch iPhone could do. It's got a camera, it's got speakers, it's got a microphone, it's got engaging content. And it's just a start. So, last April, I went to what's called the NAMA show, North America Automated Merchandising Association show. And the reason we were there is, when we started this journey two years ago, we were dreaming up ways that we could change out the chip and chocolate bar snack machines in schools, and now start engaging students with new products, new content. And this is Arduino, Raspberry Pi, the little microcontrollers that all kids are learning about from grade 10, uh, ages 10 and up. This is what we were trying to supply as products to students. And what came out of this is last April when I went to Las Vegas for this show, we met a, uh, a touchscreen manufacturer. We met the parent company, which is one of the largest distributors in North America of vending machines and touch screens. And all these things started to add up. Shortly thereafter, we were int introduced to one of our most important technology partners. And that's Intel. Intel gives us patents. Intel gives us license to be able to further our technology. They have over a million processors earmarked for my product line, and I don't worry about the cost. They give me this technology 100% for free because I use an Intel processor in every one of their, every one of our touch screens. Now, it wasn't a big deal because we already built this with an Intel processor. We just picked our favorite processor on the market and suddenly we had this. So, Goldfinger Monitors is the monitor company we work with. They have their production in China and they're capable of producing 800 screens a day. I don't worry about any production cost. I don't worry about the production environment. They already ship tens of thousands of screens a year, and they're giving me their assembly line to be able to help put this product out on the market. That's in, that's in Enterprises, is a $500 million distribution company in North America. They do $200 million a year in uh, arcades and amusements. So every Dave & Buster's, every Chuck E. Cheese, every touchscreen, Video Lottery Terminal in Las Vegas is probably one of their biggest customers. So when it came to the ability to have a vending machine touchscreen that could survive a couple high school students that might body check it, throw something at it, take a crowbar or hammer and try and break it in, these guys already had that solved. They already had a five mil and then go to 10 mil glass on here that the crowbar turns into the stylus. You're playing whack a whole lot of touchscreen. It's pretty awesome. They introduced us to Intel, and Intel really excited us because one, they had some, some great IP that we could latch on and use. And I was able to take this and immediately run with it. And they are an active participant in the conversations with us. So we started with vending machines, we are now working into the conversation of smart cities. Because if I can turn the dumbest piece of hardware in a building into the smartest one, what else can that enable? What else can that trigger and, and feed off of? 
We have great software partners. NIAX is that payment processor piece. So this is not the point of sale, but the payment processor. NIAX is in 50 countries and 26 different currencies already. They gave us a backend, an API, in order for us to be able to do the same thing that Frank was talking about, is avoid the PCI compliance. I let a vending machine do what a vending machine does, 99% unchanged. I'm literally taking the glass out and replacing it with a 49-inch screen. Intuiface was the natural selection for us. While our product is agnostic, and I can use anything from HTML5 to any game engine like Unity, Cry, Unreal, Intuiface made a lot of sense. Because if I go into the shopping mall and I'm looking for, well, let's, let's say I'm looking for a barber, I'm going to use the touch screen at that place, and it's a very high probability someone's already using Intuiface on that screen. So we wanted to be able to have a natural place that it worked well. We use LogMeIn Central, so not only can we deploy our solutions, we can manage the solutions for the client. We sell hardware, the touch screens, the interface device that goes between the touch screen and the vending machine, and then we do subscription as a service for the platform. Because now we can take things like your product, your inventory, your prices, marry those with 3D models, graphics, videos, and now that's the part that feeds right into the interface, and that's where Intuiface really comes in. We have other partners, Screenly, we've got uh, Circle. If you guys have never heard of Circle, this is kind of like the, the IFTTT. This is a really great bootstrapping piece that we're excited. They're helping build our back end, so we have uh, plans for our own public API, which will then build something that we can work with uh, Intuiface on. So again, the vending partners, they can feed right into this with very little effort. So really, at the end of the day, we're ready to start upgrading vending machines. We've got this great hardware solution, we've got the software side, we've got basically now the platform coming ahead. So let's figure out how to upgrade 15 million vending machines. We use Intuiface as that primary UX experience, and I think it's fabulous. We talked about some of the other things like Unity and HTML5. These are fabulous if you want to be able to build things from scratch. Not many people want to do that. They don't want to reinvent the wheel. Neither did we. And that was a really good piece of why we chose them. And it was 100% because it was designed and deployed. On day one, I had a working experience. I had it working on our hardware. I was able to trigger things like a vending action. I was able to take payments and processing and all that stuff day one because the interface just worked. We believe that one of the most powerful things about Intuiface is that it is an enterprise level product. It is not something that um, requires fine tuning, it does not require uh, heavy lifting, it just works. And that's what my team is getting excited about is I can take and swap all the graphics from one company to the next, change up the product selections really quickly, but if I build one template, I can just copy and paste. Thank God they came up with that copy and paste function about three years ago, five years ago, whatever it was, because you know I can see how that might have been a real big game changer. And Composer is fantastic. I love the marketplace that we can see examples of other things going on here. All the assets, the collections, the design accelerators, this is the tools that just enabled my team to put a plan into action extremely quickly. 3D models is something that we engaged in very quickly. And it's because if I'm working with students and they want to know what a part is, I want to be able to let them interact with that. Maybe stack them in Lego, maybe explode or assemble or unpack the box. What's inside of this little nondescript package that's in a vending machine? They never see the product. So we just want to be able to make sure that we're creating that presentation. And then if it's a bean to bar chocolate maker, if this is a, uh, a little soap company that wants to be able to dispense their product, have nine square feet, be the most productive nine square feet in their building as far as sales goes, this is a huge opportunity for them to be able to use their assets, the existing stuff that's already on their website, their, their social media, and their point of sale system. So we're really latching onto all of that. And one of the biggest pieces for us now is the data collection. What are you going to do with all these awesome points of interaction, these multi-dimensional ways you're going to interact with your clients? These guys built it right under the hood. And I couldn't be happier to know that that's an easy exit and entry point for us to build a work with. 
So one of the, the biggest uh, uh, buzzwords out there right now is what is the customer lifetime value in Many machines don't have customer lifetime value. They don't remember you from the last guy that bought a chocolate bar. They don't know the difference between any of this. So you're going to be able to take things like customer profiles, your triggers and actions based on past purchase history, timed events, subscriptions, you name it, even app notifications. They're going to their cell phone and getting details about a promo at a vending machine that lasts only 30 minutes and then it expires. You're creating some urgency. You're creating some need to build a buy. You're sitting in an office, you have 50 other co-workers and your favorite bag of Doritos has one left. You pull out your phone and reserve it. You prepay for it. If nobody else knows it's in there. You're just, maybe you're gonna scoop them all. I don't know. But these are the kind of interactions we see as really essential in the marketplace that are missing today. I think one of the most important pieces of Intuiface is the ease at which we can personalize this product. We routinely interact and engage with our clients, but if we're selling them something on the vending machine, maybe we should know their preferences. Are they diabetic and can't have sugary soft drinks? Is their favorite color pink? Do they only like things that have peanuts, not caramel? We're going to be able to take these things and change the user experience to match the end goal, increase your sales, be able to be evangelical about what's on that screen, and it's directed. It's a one-on-one -on -one sales conversation because you're personalizing it. I think the API Explorer is fantastic that way. We're excited to be able to see what else we can bootstrap onto this, and we're excited to be able to help and guide where Intuiface might push this. So as we're inventing the new technologies, we know we've got partners in play that are going to help us get there, and that it's just point and click, drag and drop easy. Last summer was our debut. Our company's only two years old, and last summer we were at what was called the BC Tech Summit. 10,000 people uh, show up in British Columbia and share all the technology stuff they're doing. It's a great big conference and expo. I'm there in about uh, four weeks and doing it again. But that year, we basically got to be able to put a, a survey out. Someone could complete a 60-second survey on their phone. When they were done, they got a unique code, either on their phone or sent to their email. And now they can walk up to any one of our vending machines and re receive their free swag. Get a pop, get a chocolate bar. You have a real estate agent say, contact me and get some more information. Here, have a, have a chip, have a chocolate bar, have a pack of gum. Something that is small and meaningful to start the dialogue with your customers, build that, that rapport, build the engagement, because again, they walk up to a vending machine, no clue that this is even an opportunity yet. We focus very early on on the 3D aspect, and I think one of the most important things now that we're focusing on as a platform is that you are engaging into omni-channel data. The data is king. There's a reason why Rockefellers are out of oil and now into data. And if we can engage that same data in multi-dimensional ways that people are going to interact with your machine, this is going to drive your sales. This is going to drive your customers to think big and think new. Data dimensions. Man, my head can continuously swims at the possibilities here. And my wife is the first to say, put your blinders back on and just get to work. Stop daydreaming. Stop thinking about, we just build a giant wish list. Everything we could ever want. And every day I'm seeing customers coming up with the same list of ideas. We just happen to think we might be first to dream it up. But we do things easily with Intuiface and all of the other interactions. Walk by traffic, um, head turn, eye gaze, facial expression. Are they smiling? Are they unhappy? Are they, you know, what, are, what is your customer doing? <laughs> facial recognition for payment, for identification of your customer. Walk up to the machine, hey, it recognizes you because your cell phone says you're here. It's then looking for you. Hey, I spotted Brad, he's in front of this machine, and now let me personalize his experience. These are the things that they're used to on their cell phone, on their handheld devices. Why is this not happening on a vending machine? Then we've got things such as the actual speaker, microphone, video camera. We can use all of those elements, which is fantastic. The user experience, so the interaction data, 
and now pull that transaction data and now build a very multi-dimensional picture of how you're going to sell or what you're going to sell or where you're going to take this next. Vending machines, as I mentioned, are that one-dimensional product tool. And traditionally, they don't make a lot of money. And it's because vending machines are typically only chips and chocolate bars. Well, I'd like you to think that vending machines are now Amazon in a box. Because you can sell anything. You can tell a story about anything. You can engage about anything. So traditionally, the barriers were vending machines are cash only. Well, you can add a credit card reader for 200 bucks. That opens up the data channel. What are you going to do with that data channel? You're going to pump in your Intuit face experience. Snack foods are one of the, the hardest hit uh, retail pieces of the entire vending machine industry, and they're fighting over pennies. Pennies. And they have to be able to divide those pennies into enough pieces to be able to get where they want to go. It's not happening at a big enough pace. Amazon is showing you can throw a 15, 30, 45, even $150 item in a vending machine and still make it. In the airport, you see that Best Buy vending machine, 70,000 bucks is what it takes to be able to get you there. We're talking about a $10,000 difference between uh, what we're doing today for 10,000 bucks versus 70,000 bucks for a Best Buy solution. So we think we're on the mass scale side of things. Your vending machine doesn't blend in anymore. It's not a part of the, the wall or it's not part of the code. After the touch rings added, you get increased capture rates, conversion rates, your, your average sale increases, and so does your marketing opportunity. There's a ton of features under the hood, and I think you're all familiar with a lot of those features that kind of involved in the other presentations today. And I think that really, you know, we're click and collect ready. That is one of the new buzzwords out there, click and collect. I think it's going to be a fantastic way for us to leverage. We had a number of students use us as a case study, and so some of our top picks are here, but really this is a worldwide market. We ship everywhere. Our partners, Betson, have handled all the, the production and distribution for us, and we're basically ready to go to market. We mentioned all our partners. The upgrading is awesome.